Hey, what is up, everyone? This is Johnny King with Merch Guild, and uh, this is the long, in-depth explainer tutorial video for Merchlister Pro. So, if you just got a hold of Merchlister Pro, you're in the right place. Um, this video is not going to be a like, here's how to upload merch design super duper fast. This is going to be kind of the slow, methodical walkthrough of all the features, so that you know how to do anything and everything. And then once you know, you kind of get a hang of it. If you have any questions, definitely drop us a, a question in the Merch Guild group on Facebook. Um, we have lots of people there, including myself. I'm always ready to help, and lots of other people jump in as well. And so um, today's video is going to be, if you're watching this in the future, uh, on a fresh upload of Merchlister Pro uh, version 3.0. And so we, uh, we have a a couple features coming up in an update I thought was going to come out today. The developer is uh, actually ironing out a few issues that we're still working with and uh, that should be ready to go within the next few days. So uh, there may be a little added video for those you know, couple features we're adding. But this video is going to include 99% of everything. So um, from a fresh install, if you get to the Merchless to Pro page, um, go ahead and add to Chrome. If you like and you want to like give big props, uh, you can go back to this page and uh, and leave a review. But uh, that's just up to you. So go ahead and click Add to Chrome. We're checking that. We're going to add the extension. And what that's going to do is it's going to add the Merchless to Pro extension up in your bar here. I'm just going to drag it over and close that out. <clears throat> okay, so now we have the extension. You'll see the little icon up here. That's how you access the extension. Just click that and it'll open up for you. So, um, the main thing that Merchlist Pro really does and was designed to do is to enter in your product listing details and color profiles or color selections on merch whenever you're uploading a design. So I'm just going to walk you through, like, let's just grab one. Uh, let's see here. Let's do this. Um, let's just grab one of these guys. I have no idea what this shirt is. It's just uh, in the folder that my designer sends over to me. So, give that a second. It says, I'm not even on drugs. I'm just weird. All right. You know, I don't really want that one. Um, let's try Let's try a different one. I kind of want to have something that is uh, more niche. Uh, let's see here. Um, here you go. This mama run tone runs on ketones. So this is like a keto shirt. This one is a little bit more uh, appropriate because it's going to be easier to show you how keywords uh, work and everything on this. So this will be a good example. Um, I'm just passing out. Okay, this mama runs on ketones and grace. Okay, so you're going to upload your shirt. Uh, choose whichever uh, product type. We're just going to go standard t-shirt for right now and hit save and continue. And then uh, this is your first page where Merchlist Pro can work for you. So if uh, if you go back over to your tab or again click to open that, um, the first thing that I would advise doing is just uh, creating some profiles. And so uh, the, the since we have to select the color profiles first, um, that's just what we'll build. So if you go over here to the left hand section, hit open colors, it's going to open up the color selector tool. So right here, um, you know, and I'll explain all these, uh, the first thing you're going to have to do is add a profile. And what that's going to do is it's kind of mirrors the page that you get on Amazon right here, except for the product cost. And so typically I just create a few that I really like to use. Um, so I'll say standard dark, you can name these whatever you want. And the shortcut is a keyboard shortcut that you, you press to select the color uh, profile that you want. Um, I typically just use single characters, so you could do Q, um, or you could do QW, or Q QWE. Um, it, it's, it's really whatever you want. And um, go into a little bit more detail on that in just a second. Um, so we'll just stick with Q right now. And then the, the fit type, I generally always select men, women, and youth. 
Um, and even if you're putting this on a product that doesn't have this selection, like the like the hoodies and, and sweatshirts and long sleeve shirts, um, like if they don't have the fit type, even if you select it, it's not going to cause any sort of uh, contradiction on merch. It, it just won't enter that information. And so we'll say standard dark. I'm going to choose, uh, let's see, I like these five and hit save. All right, so what that does is it creates a profile for you. So we'll, let's do that one more time. So we're going to add a profile and we'll call that standard light. Uh, we're going to make this a, a, a multi-character shortcut. Um, so let's go with um, QWERT. And then we'll say, we'll just, we just want this one on men and women's for illustration purposes. And I'm going to choose five light colors and hit save. All right. So now that we have those profiles built, um, if we go back to the merch page, uh, there's two ways to select those profiles. The first one, uh, which is kind of the older version, is not quite as fast, is you can right click on the page, making sure you don't right click inside this uh, price field. Anywhere but the price field, or I don't know. Uh, no, nope, it can't be any on any of the fields. Um, so just make sure you're clicking outside. So over here, over here, uh, just outside one of these fields, and you'll see here you have a color selector tool, and it'll show you like you can choose from standard light or standard dark. So you hit standard light, it'll select all those colors and the fit type that you want. Uh, if you go over here and press standard dark, it'll select those colors for you. Um, now something else is uh, if say that you want to enable or disable uh, one of these that you don't want it to show up if you click this check mark it says it is visible in the context menu this will also disable the shortcut so if you unselect that one so we d deselect the standard light then uh, if you look in the context menu then standard dark is the only one you have so if if you have like some seasonal ones maybe like for St. Patrick's Day or the 4th of July or Christmas which are very like niche specific colors then uh, you can disable those and um, you can also disable all and then just check the ones you want or you can click this to enable all uh, so that works pretty well uh, down here underneath uh, these buttons I'll explain those so uh, these are just move up and down arrows so if you want the say you want the standard dark to be up top you can move that up and it'll switch or you can move it down also you can just drag and drop and so you can move those to where you want them to be uh, the green check arrow is, like we said, uh, that enables or disables the uh, the shortcut profile, or sorry, just profile. Um, the X is going to remove that. So if you want to delete one, you can just click that, and this pop up will, uh, you know, pop up and say, "Are you sure you want to do this?" And you click OK. Uh, one of the features that we are working on in the next update that should be, you know, within the next week, um, is that it's going to have a a little checkbox down here that says, uh, you know do not ask this again. So if, if you don't want to have to confirm every time uh, to delete something, um, then you can just do that and it won't ask you anymore. And then uh, these two other ones, uh, this is the edit profile button, the little pencil. So you click that, you can change the color. So say like, oh, I don't want royal blue. Let's let's include brown instead. Uh, we'll go ahead and change that. It'll load up and that'll be good to go. Um, if you change something here, it's ready to go instantly. Um, you can just go back in here and standard dark, boom, it selects brown instead. And then uh, let's say that you want one that's really close to this, but you just want to change one thing. You can press this and it will clone that profile. And what it'll do is it will make it the exact same. And then you can go in and edit it and say like, oh, okay, well in this one, we, we do want the royal blue. And um, you want to make sure that you don't have any shortcut contradictions because that'll make it uh, kind of not work for you. So we'll say this one is QA. Okay, so that's all of those. We have the enable, disable, we know what those mean. Uh, the add profile is how we add one. Uh, it'll kind of always stick up over here. If you want this to go away, you can just click the add profile button again and it'll get rid of that. And then you have the shortcut timeout. And so uh, I'll go ahead and show you how the shortcut works, it works and then explain how that timeout thing uh, works for you too. So if you go over here, um, if you don't want to select the, um, oh, and see, we probably should have renamed this one to something else. Uh, Let's go ahead and say um, edit. We'll just call this one non-standard dark. Whatever that means. Okay. All right. And so, um, so you know how to use the context menu now. Just right, right-click anywhere outside of the fields. Uh, go to color selector tool, and then choose the one you want. 
Um, or the faster way, which is the one that I like to use, is the keyboard shortcut. So whenever it says uh, shortcut on the profile, that's what it means is a keyboard shortcut. Um, and so what that'll do is it'll let you select your profile by just pressing the keys. Um, and so if you go, so we have Q, Q, A, and Q, W, E, R, T. So if you go here, and uh, in order to use a shortcut, you do have to select um, one of the data fields. So click on the price field on the color page. If you press Q, you wait, it'll go ahead and select all those for you. Now it has a little bit of a delay because it's listening to see if you type any other key, uh, keys. So if you hit Q, A, it pushes over to the non-standard, or if you hit Q, W, E, R, T, and it switches over to that. Now, that being said, um, if you want it to go faster, which I typically do, um, we added this, uh, you know, multi-character uh, <clears throat> shortcut option because I had a couple people ask for it. I said, yeah, that's something we can do. Um, but you'll notice that um, it, it, there's kind of a delay, and that's because the shortcut timeout is set to 750 milliseconds. And so if you want that delay to be shorter, you could push that down. Now I push it all the way down to 100 milliseconds, and then um, if you come in here and you like you press Q, it's like almost instant. QA, it's you have to do that real fast. Um, or I don't even know if I can actually get all uh, <clears throat> all that QWERT typed in. Uh, 100 milliseconds is a little bit too fast, so maybe push that up to to a little over 200, and then we'll see. There you go. Um, I really, I suggest trying to use keyboard shortcuts that are only maybe one or two characters long um, because of that. Uh, so what I, I mean, I really like to use mine as just like Q or QA. Uh, so let's, uh, let's change this one. Let's go ahead and delete this non-standard one. And we'll change this one to, to say W. And that way, uh, you can, if it's only a single letter, you can push that all the way down to 100 milliseconds and just go W, Q, W, Q, W, and switch back and forth really fast. And so that's how the color selector tool works. So let's say we're going to stick with this um, and go ahead and save and select. So that's how, how your color menu works. Um, next is our product detail page. And this is basically what Merch Lister Pro was invented for, is to help you enter in the information on this page quickly. Um, back in the beginning, uh, I was basically, I, I would find a niche, like say St. Patrick's Day, and I would write um, a, you know, a bullet point, or, or two bullet points in a description that were the exact same, and have all my niche keywords in those, and then I would just rewrite the title every time. So, um, but so I would basically copy and paste my brand name, and then I would write a new title for it, uh, for that particular shirt, and then uh, I would copy and paste bullet point one, copy and paste bullet point two, copy and paste my description, and hit save and select, and I could do that pretty fast. It was taking me probably about a minute and a half to two minutes to go through the whole upload, uh, you know, keyword process in, until I had it, you know, saved. I move on to the next shirt. So about roughly two minutes each. Um, and now I can do it in, you know, 30 seconds or less uh, and going through and having way better uh, branded keywords. But so um, on this page, it's going to do the same sort of thing that the color selector tool does. So if you go back to open merch, um, you can add a profile here, and it's going to enter all of those. And you can just type in a brand name, type in a, a title of a product. Um, and so if we just said, uh, what what is this one called? It is this mama runs on ketones and grace. So if we said uh, brand name is Merchless to Pro Designs, and this mama runs on ketones and grace, keto. Uh, let's say funny keto shirt. And we're going to make this shortcut Q. That's what I like. Um, let's go ahead and say that this is 2297. And key product features are, uh, I'm just going to skip over these and we'll say keto shirt bullet one and keto shirt bullet two. And this is a super amazing awesome design. If you're going to use uh, qualifier words like like good, amazing, awesome, quality, you need to like make sure that you're talking about the design 
and not of the shirt because uh, Amazon has you know thrown Banhammer down on people and deleted their designs <clears throat> if, if you try to make quality claims about the shirt. And so that's something that uh, is pretty important. And we'll go over that a little bit more um, in the uh, the data machine profile part. But so this is super amazing, awesome design uh, that will make all of your friends jealous. Super duper jealous. I'm basically just trying to put in a description uh, that has at least 75 characters. Okay, um, so now we have that that <coughs> uh, d profile, and so it has the same features as uh, the the color profiles. You can move it up and down the list. You can enable it and uh, enable it and disable it. You can delete it, uh, edit it, or clone it. Um, now here is where things kind of uh, get tricky. So. Whenever you have a profile, you can go ahead and upload it. Like oh, when I say tricky, it's not really tricky. It's just you have a lot more options as far as how to uh, proceed forth from this spot. So we'll start off with the most uh, generic one, which is the very first thing was the context menu that we did before. And so when you go back to it, you can uh, select anywhere except for the data fields, right click, and go here, and it'll show you uh, your MLP designs. Click that, and it'll input all your data for you. And that, that's you know perfectly acceptable. Um, most people don't use it that way anymore, but lots do. And so um, it's just whatever's up to you. Now there's a few other options here. Uh, first off, you'll see that whenever you look in the context menu, it says MLP designs um, because it's sorting it by brand name. So if you have a lot of shirts under the same brand name, you can actually go back into Merchants to Pro up here at the top and click on this uh, toggle and it'll switch from uh, sorting by brand to title on the context menu. And so if you right click there and go back to here, now it'll show you this model runs on ketones and Grace Funny Keto shirt, which is the title that we selected for the shirt. Um, so that's how that feature works. Now, um, you can, instead of, if you don't want to use the, the add profile button every time to add a new profile, uh, you don't have to do that. You can actually uh, build profiles using the, uh, like a, a CSV, which is a comma separated, uh, variable I believe um, it's like an Excel spreadsheet but it's a little bit different it, it won't store formulas or anything like that um, and so you can build out profiles using that way and it's a lot faster uh, and so you can you can do this two ways you can either uh, click this link it says get CSV for modification and it will open up the the CSV that has the, the proper formatting which is just uh, brand name, title, price, feature one, feature two, description, and shortcut. And, and so you can type these in um, and then save them and then you could just press import and it would import it. Now importing is an important thing because if you import a file um, it's going to override all of your current profiles. And so let's say that we, uh, let's go ahead and, and just do this, Well, since we're doing a long walkthrough. Um, Let's say we're going to make a brand name and it is um, Cool Guys Designs and this is a great title. Uh, price we're going to say is super high so we're going to go 29.86 and the feature one is Cool Bullet 1 and then we'll go Neato Bullet 2 um, and in these instead of saying bullet one and bullet two, it says key, uh, feature one and feature two, because that's actually what Amazon has it you know, on here is key product features. Um, so that's why they're called features. And so uh, we have great uh, great title, price, cool, uh, yeah, description. Um, we're actually, just, let's just leave the description blank and then we'll say that the shortcut is gonna be W on this one. Um, and you can go through here and we'll just you know make a bunch of those. And we'll say that the shortcut here is E R T Y U I O P A uh, or S and A. All right, and so okay, and that's kind of cool. And it changed the prices on those a little bit, but that's all right. Um, and and so now that we can save that, we'll save that. Go ahead and put that on my desktop. Let's be see. There it is. I just upgraded this PC to Windows 10, so now I'm having a little bit hard time finding my files in my Explorer. All right, and then uh, we're gonna say 
demo profiles, MLP three. Okay. You want to make sure that it, it saves that in that CSV form. And then if you go into Merch Lister Pro, you can import these. Um, and like we said, and what that'll do is it'll go ahead and it'll pull all of them into here. Um, but it will override. So if you if you do an import, you're going to lose whatever profiles are already on this page. It's only going to have the profiles that are in this CSV. So since this uh, this MLP designs one isn't in the CSV, that one will get deleted. However, there's another option that you can do called append. And appending does the same thing, except it, it adds these profiles but keeps the ones that are already here. So we're going to do that instead. And so we'll go ahead and go to the desktop and we'll go to the demo profiles and let those load in. And so now we have the MLP designs one that we had first, plus all the other ones that we had. You look on here, uh, go into Merchless Poet, you can see oh, great title, great title, great title. Um, and you kind of move through those. Or you can actually click on one of these data fields and just like go Q, W, E, R, up, oh, that's E, R, T, and you can see how it changes back and forth, uh, cycles through those. Uh, again, there's a delay because the shortcut timer is set up really high. If you pull this all the way down, if you're only using uh, single character shortcuts, you could roll through these like Q, E, R, T, and just move, and it, it's super fast. Okay, so that is how um, you know adding profiles works. Uh, we learned how to get the blank CSV for modification. Also, if you want to like, let's say that. Um, you have a bunch of profiles for a niche, like I made all these St. Patrick's Day shirts, um, and you want to save those. Well, you can export those as a CSV. It'll it'll download in the same fashion. But when you do that, it's going to have all of those designs, including that one that you created using the tool. And so what I like to do is I have a um, a Dropbox file to where I uh, I have one Dropbox file that is just Merchless to Pro profiles. And then it has a whole bunch of folders in it that are separated by niche. So I have like a St. Patrick's Day niche and uh, you know Cinco de Mayo folder and Fourth of July folder, Thanksgiving folder, and so on. And what I'll do is um, after I'm done designing those kind of and loading up a bunch of designs for the year, I'll save those profiles and put them in that folder. That way, when you know the next year rolls around, um, I can just go back into that folder. I can import those in and edit them a little bit. You know, uh, you know, change the titles, and then I'm ready to go, and I don't have to kind of rethink all my keywords. Words. So if you export them, uh, you can save those permanently. Or, you know, for example, all of these profiles are saved on your computer. Um, like we don't we don't save them uh, on on a server anywhere. They're not online unless you put them somewhere online. Uh, you know, uh, we don't we don't make a backup for you. And so if your computer crashes, those are gone. Um, and so I strongly uh, recommend like, backing those up uh, somewhere besides the one computer you're on. Or let's say, you know, uh, your license that you got with Merchless to Pro is good for four different computers. So uh, I actually like to keep these profiles and all my designs on a network drive in my house. So, um, you know, if I'm in my office like I am now, I can access them all. Or, you know, if I have my laptop out and I'm on my uh, couch, you know, I can upload shirts from there as well. And I'll still have access to all my profiles and all my designs. And so that's a, that's a good option as well. It's a pro tip there. Um, so that's that's how you use the export feature. And again, you can export those and you can import them and it will override all your profiles or you can uh, append. And so let's let's go ahead and import the one we did before and say, OK, that's that's all right. And we'll go back to my PC desktop. We'll look for the demos. Yeah. Oh. OK. And so now you'll see that 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 first profile, the MLP is gone because it got deleted because it wasn't on that demo profile sheet. All right, so here's what we'll do. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to import that blank one. So let's see here. Let's see, it's profiles, I believe. Yeah, so um, let's go profile 13. I'm pretty sure that one's blank. Yeah, okay. So I just imported a blank CSV and it deleted all the profiles. Um, and so if you're trying to clear things out, that's a, that's a pretty easy way to do that. Um, and then, so now you know how to use the color tab. You know how to use uh, what I call the merch tab or the merch profile tab. Um, again, if you're in any, of, if you're in the data machine or the color tab, if you click this open merch, 
this is the home screen, like the primary tab. Um, also, um, your Merch List of Pro extension will update uh, no, like in real time, no matter what tab you're on, um, if that makes sense. So um, we know how to use colors. We know how to use the Profiles tab. Covered all the shortcuts and all the buttons. Um, so we're going to go on to what I think is the coolest part of Merch List of Pro right now is the data machine. And so um, I came out with a product uh, about a month ago called the Merch Listing Data Machine. It was an Excel spreadsheet that you could use to, uh, you just add in a brand name, title, and your keywords, and it would build the profiles for you. Um, but like, and it was really cool and it worked well, but you had to then um, like copy a selection of cells in an Excel um, your workbook, you had to paste those into your CSV, you had to save the CSV, then you had to import the CSV, and I was like, man, uh, I just wish this was faster. And so uh, we we built it into uh, the extension now. And so uh, what this does is it allows you to crank out um, like really cool looking uh, listing profiles for Merch List Pro really fast. And so I'll just show you how this works. Um, so starting off, it's gonna have all these default <clears throat> values which you can change um, you need to change and then um, down here it's going to insert those default values into the the listing details um, so like right here it says uh, brand name title keyword two and so it's going on a t on a standard shirt um, it's going to make a title that is like title so whatever title you come up with shirt and then the bullet point one by default is our title t-shirt is the perfect T-shirt for keyword uh, keyword two fans, um, and so let, let's just use ours for example. So our brand name we're gonna say is um, we'll just say MLP Designs. Our main keyword is gonna be the main keyword is the title, and so the title that we wanted is this mama runs on ketones and grace. Um, all right, and you'll notice as I'm typing um, these fields over here in the character counter are changing. So as I type here, um, it's changing the title and the bullets because since bullet one contains the title, the longer the title gets, the longer bullet one gets. And so this updates in real time to make sure that you don't go over the 256 character limit that uh, Merch allows you for your, your bullet points. And so ketones and grace, funny shirt. Oh, well, we don't want to put shirt because um, what this is actually going to build a profile for all the different uh, products. So it's going to build a standard shirt, a premium shirt, a long sleeve shirt, a sweatshirt, and a hoodie. Um, and so on standard shirt, it's going to be title shirt, premium shirt, it's going to be title premium shirt. Uh, so on with long sleeve shirt, sweatshirt, and hoodie. Um, now down at the bottom, after you put in your keyword, so let's say this model runs on ketones and grace. Uh, so let's say uh, keto diet. Um, high fat, low carbs, and I, I mean, I'm I'm just kind of uh, you know brainstorming on keywords right here. You're definitely going to want to do keyword research. Uh, you know, use some of them like Amazon predictive search text. Uh, I use um, I use Merchant Informer for keywords. I use Merchant Words for keywords. Um, there's a lot of things that you should do for keyword research. This isn't really um, a class on how to do keyword research, but uh, one of the things I want to add, just to you know, let everyone know up front, is that you should be checking your keywords to make sure they're not trademarked, and you should be checking your uh, your your main title to make sure that it's not trademarked. That's a, it's a super super important thing to do. Um, so don't want to leave that out uh, because. I personally believe like nothing will get your merch account, uh, you know, deleted or uh, banned or whatever. Um, nothing will get you shut down faster than trademark infringement. Uh, Amazon takes it very seriously. Um, so that being said, um, let's see, Mama runs on ketones and grace. It's if it's grace, it might be a Christian T-shirt. Um, so we'll say Christian keto. Uh, and oh, like. Um, it's a mama shirt, so it says mama, so we say Mother's Day. Okay, 
So now we have our uh, our keywords in here, and so it's going to build these out. So it says, you know, our title T-shirt is perfect T-shirt for keyword two fans, and so um, and you know, keyword two is going to be keto diet. And so you can actually go down here at the bottom and see the listing previews, and and so you can see how it's going to read on the page. So the brand name is MLP Designs. Title is This Mama Runs on Ketones and Grace Funny Shirt. The price is 19.99. Uh, it says our This Mama Runs on Ketones and Grace um, T-shirt. Now, so that sounds a little, I mean, is the perfect t-shirt for keto, uh, so it sounds a little bit weird. Um, so maybe you could put, um, like, the title in quotes. So if you, um, these title and bullet point, like, up here is where you're going to edit this. So maybe if you don't like it saying uh, our, this mama, you know, like, our title, um, you could put quotes on either side of this little title thing. Um, and it will then put that in quotes. So that makes a little bit more sense because um, it's kind of like our you know, theme is the perfect t-shirt for keto diet fans. It's a great gift for idea for birthday or Christmas. If you want to change that, let's say maybe like you don't want th this whole, it's a great gift idea for birthday or Christmas. Um, like super cool shirt for people who like shirts. I mean, you can put in anything you want, and I recommend you changing this up. Um, that way, you know, uh, you don't have the exact same uh, listing details as 100 other people, because I know a lot of people probably won't change this up. But I, I, like, I don't personally use this default. I use something that's very similar to it, but um, I, I don't use it um, exactly. And so now you have uh, our This Mama Runs on Ketones and Grace Funny T-shirt is the perfect T-shirt for Cuter Diet fans. Super cool shirt. Blah 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 blah, and then now uh, you'll see the whole. It's a great gift idea for birthday or Christmas is still on all the rest of them, so you have to change these uh, each of these profiles individually. So uh, you can go through here, but this is like for every standard shirt you make um, or that the data machine makes for you, it's going to follow this template. Um, and so what that does is it creates um, a very keyword targeted. Uh, listing detail uh, for each product and then build a profile for you in, within Merch Lister Pro automatically. Um, and so you can change these. So say that you don't want the shortcut to be um, a letter. You could want it to be a number. You could change the price. And let's say uh, we want that to be $22.97. And then we want the premium shirts to be $26.97. Then it, then it does that. Um, and so those are already done. So now, like once you I mean play around with these, definitely, and you can move the keywords around too, uh, and and have it re you know uh, have it repeat the same keyword. You just have to use these little placeholders. So if you want to add a keyword in or add the title in, you just use this little uh, curly bracket, which is um, essentially right above the apostrophe. You just have to hit shift. Like there's a square bracket, and you don't want that. You want the curly bracket. So you go shift, square bracket. Um, and then keyword, and then a space, and then whichever keyword you want. Um, so we'll say keyword two again, and then close the curly bracket. And now you'll see, um, what is keyword two? It is keto diet. Um, and so on the premium shirts, now it says, Arma, uh, is the perfect t-shirt for keto diet fans. It's a great gift idea, oh, keto diet, I didn't actually put a space. So that's an important thing to know. Whenever you put it in, you want to have, like, double check it, you want a space to be between this word and the curly bracket, and then another space to be between the curly bracket and the next word, so that looks normal. So now we have, it's a great gift idea, keto diet for a birthday. That doesn't really sound right, um, and so you can play around with that a little bit. Um, but like I said, this is the most customizable part of Merch to Pro is the, the data machine fields. So, uh, you know, go crazy with that. Definitely test things, optimize this. Uh, but once you're, you're pretty satisfied with the way things are coming out, um, then it's time to import these in. So like we said, if we're back in the um, Merch, we have no profiles here. So we go to data machine. Oh, no. Okay, so this is another thing. Uh, if you make listing data or do you, you make a change, you need to import those or append those uh, because it's not going to save it on the page um, if you don't. So like I just lost all that data I made the change. So we're just going to run through this real quick. MLP designs. And I like to capitalize on my words, just looks good. Um,
and I put the word funny because then it'll say you know funny t-shirt funny sweatshirt uh, keto diet uh, fat low carbs Christian moms and uh, Mother's Day. So now I'm hitting the word mama, moms, and mother or mothers. Um, and we got this all. And so it builds that out. And so right now um, I can import profiles because I don't have anything in there. So you could do either. Appending it won't do anything since there's none to uh, add it onto. Uh, so either or. So we could just do import, hit OK. And it'll say operation completed successfully. Again, uh, in the future, we'll have that little do not uh, ask again checkbox on these. So uh, you won't have to confirm that every time. And now if you go back over to the merge panel, it has all your uh, your profiles here. And so you have the, um, this one is the shirt, premium shirt, long sleeve shirt, sweatshirt, and hoodie. And um, so now, since uh, we have these set up as Q, W, E, R, and T, if you go over to your profile, click on one of the data fields, it doesn't matter which one, uh, any of them work. Uh, I kind of like to click on the description field because then I can be really close to the save selection and continue button. Um, but so, yeah, if you have any of these fields, so we hit Q, it loads it all. So we have shirt, uh, and you can kind of roll through these and it changes all the stuff for you. Uh, choose the one you want. So we wanted uh, the one that was the shirt and press save the selection and continue. And then you come to the last page uh, where you just want to sell public, submit product and uh, and fire that one off and like go through. Now what I, I really like to do whenever I'm uploading shirts is I will I will open like five or six tabs. A lot of times I'll do six because I'll upload it uh, twice on a standard shirt because I'll do a standard shirt with dark colors, standard shirt with light colors, um, and then I'll upload it on a premium shirt with dark colors, and then I'll upload it on a long sleeve shirt, sweatshirt, and a hoodie uh, with you know all of the available cut colors. Uh, that's something I, I will go ahead and uh, and show you real quick is that if you upload it on, let's say we go and do this, go back. This is something that has confused people a little bit as far as the colors go. Uh, I may have should have mentioned this whenever I was going over the colors the first time. Um, there you go. So if we're going, let's do a long sleeve t-shirt. Um, on the long sleeve t-shirts, sweatshirts, and hoodies right now, they only offer five colors. And so you have heather gray, dark heather, black, navy, and royal blue. Um, and so what I recommend everyone do is go in and make um, a color profile just for those colors. Uh, so what add a profile and I just say um, long sleeve shirts. Um, and then the shortcut on these, let's say it's W. Um, now like I said on the on the long sleeve shirts don't allow you where are we at? Oh it's up here. Um, they don't allow you to choose uh, the fit type and so but even if I'll just show you even if you have a fit type it doesn't matter so we have uh, dark heather, light heather, black, navy and royal blue hit save um, so I'll show you like if you try to use a standard pro profile that we had before um, like so that was the standard dark profile that has these colors it's only going to select the colors that it can but it will select those colors um, so see it only chooses the dark heather, black, and navy, but if you hit uh, the one we just created, it'll select all of those and then you can go and continue. So that's an easy way to do those. Um, I recommend everyone having a color profile just for these particular products and you can use the same profile on every one. Um, another thing people were telling me about was that they used the color, like the color selector tool, but they never really used the profile tool. And so we used to have the price available on the color selector tool. So you could put it here and then they would use that. Um, but now uh, they 
you know, they don't have that anymore uh, because it was confusing people because what would happen is uh, they would select their color. Let me go ahead and get rid of these. They'd select their color price. The, the, the price would be in the color profile uh, on a previous version of Merchless to Pro. And so they would just select their color profile and it would auto input like let's say 29.97. Um, and so then they would hit select and go to the next one. Well then if they went in here and they have it set to 29.97 and they use a keyword, it pushes it back down to 19.99. And so like the uh, the profile that you make overrides the price that you're setting on the color. Uh, and so to try to eliminate that confusion, um, we just removed the price uh, from the color page. So you, you can't set the price here anymore. But if that's something you like to do um, and you don't use the profile page, what you can do is just add a profile and then put a price in there. So let's say 39.45. And the shortcut we're going to use, um, it, we'll use A. Um, and hit save. Oh, you know, here's actually a, a, a good thing I, I didn't mention before. Um, is what happens if you use a shortcut more than once. So if you hit Q, you'll notice, okay, now it, it, it highlights these and says check for duplicated shortcuts. Um, because now, like if you have this one that you, you loaded with Merch Data Machine, uh, and then you add um, you know, a profile that you're only using for price, um, then whenever you go through and try to load it, if you press Q, it's gonna delete all your information. Um, so if you want to use it for just price, um, just make a profile that only has the price in it. It'll be blank. And then you can go through here and just, uh, you know, write whatever you want, um, and it, it'll make it. Now, that being said, uh, whenever you have profiles, if they have duplicated ones, um, whenever you press a, a keyboard shortcut, the extension is going to look for it um, from the top bottom, uh, so the top down, rather, um, in the profile list. So it you know goes through the table from the top and goes all the way through. So if you hit Q, it's going to start at the top and once it finds a keyboard uh, shortcut that says Q, it's going to use that one and it's not and it's not going to look anymore. And so if you have duplicate ones, it's going to give you whatever profile it finds first. And so we added this feature in here so if there's a duplicated shortcut, it'll highlight those with, oh, okay, like that's duplicated, don't want to use that. Let's go ahead and press A instead and then that goes away. And so now we can use Q, um, or if you only want to, uh, let's say, you know, put the price in, you hit A, and then type it in yourself. Um, let's see, so we've, uh, we've gone through colors, we've gone through the merch profiles, we've gone through the merch listing uh, data machine. Um, oh, and the data machine also works the same way with import profiles and a pin profile. So let's say you have these, and then you make a St. Patrick's Day shirt, so we just go, St. Patty's, uh, green stuff, more green stuff, lots of green, and uh, even more green. Okay, and so then uh, if you import those, it's going to delete all the ones we had before, like I said, but if you append, you say okay, and now if you open Merch, you're gonna have all of your profiles that you built before, and then the ones, oh yeah, now all of them are duplicated because we didn't change it. Um, so again, what I like to do is uh, with Merch Data Machine is I'll make these profiles and then I'll list a shirt and then I'll export these, throw them into a, <clears throat> a folder on my Dropbox and then the next time when it comes around, I'll open the data machine, I'll make a new one and then I'll just import them and it'll overwrite the ones uh, that I had before, but that's okay with me because I already saved them. Um, and what that does is one, it keeps me from having to change the uh, the shortcut all the time within here. That's certainly something uh, you know. If you want to change the shortcuts, uh, you just go through and hit you know change, change, and people do that. I just feel like it's a little bit easier. Uh, some people don't even care to you know save their profiles. They just uh, import it every time and uh, don't care. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll make new profiles when they need them. Um, so let's uh, you know, recap. Uh, I'm really trying to cover everything, so sorry if I'm going th over things more than once. I really want this to you know, help everyone and, and, and answer all the questions uh, that you know, anyone has um, as much as possible. But again, 
Uh, I'm sure you will have questions. Uh, and if you do, definitely drop those in the Merch Guild or send me a PM on Facebook. Uh, it's the easiest way to reach me. And uh, and I'm, I'm here to help. It's, it's, it's what my job is at this point, is to help you guys. And so we went through colors. We went through the Merch Profiles. We went through the uh, Open Data Machine. Um, and that is really it. Um, guys, the now you have the tool that's going to help you upload to merch so much faster, make things so much easier, make your life a whole lot better, uh, give you time to spend with your family or work on other projects. Um, but the the number one thing is that Merchlister Pro doesn't do all the work for you. You have to take action and you have to you know grind on this. This is just a, a tool that makes a, uh, a monotonous job a little bit easier and uh, or, or a lot easier, I like to think. Um, but the most important thing really is just uh, use it every day. Um, even if you know you don't fill up all your slots, which I recommend, like just get in there and use it every day. Uh, well, that's it. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, sorry for taking up so much of your time. Uh, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll catch you guys later.